Um, so I wanted to start the, I was going to show you this movie. It's really nice, but maybe you guys can watch the movie at home. <laughs> um, it's called Butterfly Circus. Has anyone ever seen this movie? So it's a really nice movie, and when you watch the movie, it was, uh, you'll, you, you'll say it has nothing to do with the church whatsoever, and you'll be struggling to figure out what on earth it has to do with, with, the, with, the, with anything spiritual. But it's a beautiful little short movie. It's like 20 minutes, and I'll give you the details. It's about a guy who basically was born armless and legless, limbless. And he really is limbless, and uh, it turns out this guy... Um, he's an inspirational person, but he was born actually of Serbian Orthodox parents, and he's the one who, hi buddy, high five, ouch, and um, he was the one, it's okay, just leave him, and then he, and he was actually the one who made the movie, so you'll see him in the movie, and he's just, you know, he was born this way, no arms and no legs, um, and so I'll, I'll kind of give you the details of the movie, and maybe we'll watch it. Maybe we won't. But anyway, he's in this, he's in this uh, sideshow, like a circus sideshow. They've got like a bearded lady. They've got like a really, really fat person. They've got Siamese twins. And this is like back in the Depression days, okay? So they would go to these circus sideshows where you'd go into a tent. You'd pay money to see these freaks of nature. And these freaks of nature... Basically, the, the guy who was doing the, the talk, he would like, he's basically mocking them and making fun of them and, you know, talking about how ugly they are and how terrible they are. And even one of the little boys throws a tomato at the, 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 the limbless man. And, you know, one of the things that the, the, the guy says, you know, God himself has turned his back on this person, right? And this kid throws a tomato and it gets all over him because he's got no arms and legs to defend himself. He's just a stump standing on this thing. Um, so this is the, uh, this is the, uh, this is the story of the church, this transformation. So you can see the butterfly circus. It's all about transformation. All the people that were there were all caterpillars and they became butterflies. Um, so I was going to say this before, but the limbless man, he, by the way, the limbless man, uh, is the Serbian Orthodox guy I was talking about. He's actually the one who produced and directed the movie. So he starred in his own movie. Um, and he's now a very, he's like an inspirational speaker and he, you know, if you Google him, he's all over the place. Um, but the limbless man is us. And the side circus is the world. It's the ugliness of the world. And the butterfly circus is the church. And the Menendez, uh, the man in the black, He's like the priest at church, or, you know, he represents even Christ. And, uh, and the performers in the church, in the circus, are the saints. They're the ones who've come and gone and have done, gone through the same process before us, right? As you can see in the story, you know, she was a prostitute. One guy was a beggar. One guy was a bar fighter, right? And so he, he gave him a, a glimpse into this, and he said, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, he said, it's not fair. They have stuff I don't. He's like, you're right. You have an advantage, right? The, the harder the adversity, the more glorious the transformation, right? And this is why we celebrate the, the St. Mary's of Egypt and the St. Moses of the Black and the Augustines. I mean, we see how hard that is for that transformation to take place. So um, just some beautiful points on, on the story and, and how it, it is what, what the church is to us. Um, the circus shows that's the dirty, dark place where people are exploited for their weaknesses. And this is where the way the world is. Um, it, it wants to look at these weaknesses. It, it enjoys the weaknesses. It, I mean, if you even think about reality TV shows or, you know, not Oprah, but who's that? Maury Povich and all these guys or, the, or even Bridezilla or whatever these shows are, right? All of these shows... They want to show you weakness, and they want to show you what's bad about um, society. I was listening to a podcast. Even things like, you know, you can buy these t-shirts at the mall that say, you know, I'm a brat or something like that, where you're, you're basically, you know, glorying in, in, in the weakness and, and the fallen state. And, and if you noticed, even the people who were watching, it brought out the worst in them, right? The kid who threw the tomato, the other people who laughed at the weakness. So th this is the, you know, it, the, the ugliness of the world. Oh. Thanks, thank you. 
Um, the kids are here. And so is the popcorn. <laughs> yeah, he's speaking of circus. Um, and so there's lots of little subtlety in this movie. Uh, you know, I don't know, maybe we should talk about this another time, but I'll, I'll kind of go through it quickly. Um, th this, the side circus brought out the worst in everybody, but you even notice that uh, Menendez, he stopped the boy from throwing the tomato. This is little things in the movie I just want to point out. Micah, Mike, have a seat, Mike. Um, so the boy was about to throw the tomato, and he stopped him from throwing the tomato. And this is what we do to each other, right? We hurt each other. We say things to one another, and we try to destroy each other, right? And Christ comes in, and he stops us from hurting. And, and that scene reminded me of when Christ stopped the people who were about to stone the sinful woman, right? And, and it, you can almost imagine him holding their hands and saying, Let, let's not throw a stone at each other. Let's not destroy one another. Let's build each other up. And, you know, the, the part after that, what he said, you are magnificent, right? And you can't help, but you can see what, what this, the limbless man was thinking. is like, have you even seen me? Right? And he spit at him because he thought he was lying. He couldn't believe it himself, right? And yet God saw in him something he didn't see in himself, right? Even that scene later when he says, you know, God himself turned his back on you. And he says, why are you saying that? And he said, because you still believe it, right? So God sees in us something greater than we see in ourselves, right? And that's what Menendez was like, right? He, he saw this potential of transformation in us. Um, man does not see, uh, okay, I saw that, said that. Um, and then he spit on him. And... This is something that sometimes we do in different ways, right? Sometimes God gets a little too close, and the church gets a little too close, and people push back, right? And we see this even, you know, when, when someone asks, hey, why haven't you come to church if someone hasn't been for a while? Or why, you know, where have you been? Or, you know, the priest comes and asks, and he goes, what, you judging me? You're saying, I'm, you know, and, and we push back against God, especially when God tries to infringe on certain aspects of our life. We, we spit right back, right? And this is something we actually do without thinking about it. So it's something we should be aware of, right? When someone tries to correct us or teach us something or tell us, you know what, maybe that wasn't the right way to do it, we've pushed back pretty hard, right? Because now you're touching into something that's very sensitive with me. Okay, so this is something actually we do. Um, and yet he was inspired and intrigued by the circus. So the circus, the, excuse me, the butterfly circus. The butterfly circus is exactly that, right? It's the commune of saints. And when we look at it and we see the saints who have come and gone before us and we see what they've achieved and the glory they lived in, we think, hmm, I wonder if I could do that. I wonder if that's possible. I wonder if I could live like this saint could. And that's the whole point of the church, right? It's full of these transformed people who used to be bar fighters and prostitutes, literally, right? And all transformed and all in the church, and we all look at them with kind of wonder and amazement, thinking maybe we can be like this. Um, and the circus celebrates strength and not weakness, right? It kind of, sort of reminds me of Cirque du Soleil a little bit, where you just see the human body doing amazing things, right? And so this is what, oh boy, that's okay. It's all plastic. It's all plastic. He's fine. He's cutie. Look, Elias. See what you used to do when you were little? Huh? Yeah, he's, he's got a future. He's got to be a saint. Stop, stop, stop. Mike and I fight a lot, so we just don't want to do that in front, in front of other people. It's our private thing. Okay. Um, and, and the church does the exact opposite, right? The church glorifies and sanctifies the body, right? So you see that the same person who everyone was looking at in a disgust... Oh, Belisa. Really, Summer?
So we have seven adults versus one little, about 14 pound kid. And he's winning, especially summer. <laughs> Six adults, zero. <laughs> one year old, one. All right, that was exciting. Okay, all right, all right, let's, uh, let's move on. Wait. Oh, I cut the face side twice, okay. Um, and so then the transformation happens and this is really where the church, where the story becomes quite orthodox, right? We learned that the performers used to be criminals um, and in this butterfly circus, they were transformed from what they used to be into beautiful butterflies. And this is what the Lord does um, with us. He takes on our brokenness and he transforms it. And this is the whole point of the church. Okay? And, we, and the church is full of these stories, St. Moses the Black, uh, Matthew the tax collector. I mean, I, I was telling my kids last night about how horrible a person Matthew was, right, when he was uh, Levi, the tax collector, right? And, and what these people were like these tax collectors and, and how horrible of people they actually were um, and that Christ would even talk to him, transform him and then as you all know Matthew wrote a gospel and for those of you who study the New Testament you know that Matthew wrote his gospel to the Jews right because he was a Jew, he was a tax collector and he wanted to say you know he wanted to write back to his own people um, so the stories are, are, are plenty and the Samaritan woman, St. Fatini um, lots of stories of transformation so this is what the church does and let me get to the very last of my bullets, is in the church, we don't make lists of sins. You know, like sometimes you hear about the, you know, the seven deadly sins, and this is a cardinal sin, and this is a bad thing, and you shouldn't do this, and you shouldn't do that. And we don't view the church this way. We view the church as a hospital, right? We, church, we view the church as a place where sick people come, right? And oftentimes, you know, people are discouraged. They come to church and they see a lot of hypocrisy, and they see a lot of people who aren't very good, and they see a lot of people who aren't acting in the right way, and we think, look at this place, you know. Even in the church, everyone's a hypocrite. And the answer is, well, of course everybody is, right? Everyone in the church is, right? Because it's a hospital, and this is where we come for transformation. Okay, so there's, there's really no way I can finish everything. Should we continue? Is everyone okay? All right, all right. You know me, I'm always in a rush. Um, so there's a word that we, we, we use sometimes, and the, the Orthodox Fathers have used a word called theosis, which means to basically transform and become like God. And this is what we are called to do on earth, right? We are called to start our transformation to the heavenly while we're still on earth, to become more like Christ while we're on earth. And this is the, the whole point of life on earth. And it's not a moral system of rules. It's not, here's the things you can do, here's the things you can do, right? And if you break this rule, that's really bad. And if you do these things, it's really good. It's nothing like that, right? The whole point of the circus was simply transformation. Take somebody who had one kind of life and make him into something beautiful. Make him into something inspiring, right? And this is what God wants from us. He wants to make us into full human beings, into what we are meant to be right, the point of our lives, right, and so it is a, it is not a breaking down process, and unfortunately, sometimes we think of Christianity that way, right, where it's you're bad, you're this, you're that, you need to come to church more, you're not coming enough, well, why do you come, and Abuna talked about this wonderfully today, even in the sermon, this idea of transformation, you know, why do you come, you don't come because you're supposed to come and check a box, you come so God can make you better, Right? So we do the small part, we get in the car that God gave us and we drive using the time that God gave us and we just show up and then God does the work, right? And God transforms and God changes us, right? Um, and, uh, you know, uh, the point that she made in, this, in the podcast is the freak show is like reality TV, right? We find damaged people, we find messed up people and we put them in front of everybody. And then you feel good about yourself. You say, hey, at least I'm not as messed up as that person. Right? And we listen to people who have really, really horrible lives, do really all kinds of awful things, and you feel, you, you feel good about yourself. One thing you can do is you can say, well, I don't need to change. I'm really awesome compared to that person. That's not a good outcome. Or you can judge the person, say, can you believe how bad these people are? 
right? And you know, we're, we see this a lot. It's easy to do, right? We even see it in the wake of the Paris attacks, right? So many things on Facebook of, you know, here's these monsters, these people are awful, and it gives us an opportunity to kind of say, I'm so good, right? I'm so awesome. I'm not a horrible monster. I'm in the right religion. Look at how horrible their religion is. And it allows us to get angry and allows us to have justified anger towards another human being, right? And, you know, honestly, every time I see a Pray for Paris um, thing on Facebook, I think to myself, well, who's praying for the terrorists? Because they're the ones who probably need it more than anyone else, right? These are the people who need the circus. They need the transformation. They need the church. They're obviously broken. They're obviously something's wrong. Something horrible has gone wrong inside their makeup, right, in, in what they believe and how they think. Right? And they're the ones who need us more than anything else, right? They're the ones who need... Christianity, they need transformation in their lives more than anyone else. Um, so, and, and, and so what's the point of the transformation? It helps us to, it makes us into human beings. It helps us to grow and love like him so that we love our fellow man. And this is the ultimate goal, okay? This is the ultimate goal in everything, is to love our fellow man like ourselves, right? And this is what Christ did. Right? So think about this. If we become more like Christ, what did Christ do? He died for other people. Would you die for somebody else? Would you live your life for someone else? Would you sacrifice for someone else? Right? I want you all to think back. You know, when Jesus talks about the end of days, he says, you know, in Matthew 25, he says, I'm going to come, right? And then I'm going to separate the world into two groups, right? The, the, the sheep on my right hand and the goats on my left hand. Okay, and then he said a few things. Does anyone remember what they were? How he's going to decide who goes where? I was hungry and you fed me. I was in prison and you visited me. I was sick and you came and saw me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. That's how he's going to decide. Is there, there's no fasting in there. There's no communion. There's no reading the Bible. There's no prayer. There's no confession. What happened? What happened? There's no attending church early. There's no dressing as a deacon. There's no learning hymns. What happened? Did he miss it? Did he forget it? There's no matanyas. There's no standing in prayer and vigil. What happened? Did Christ miss it? Did he forget? Those things have to do what? Bear fruit. Right? Those things have to manifest themselves into loving one another giving the poor, giving those who are needy, those who are sick, those who are in prison. That's it. That's the thing. Right? All those other things get us there. But those things aren't. Those are just things. If those things you know, don't leave with us, you know, kind of Abuna made this notion of Christ dismisses us in peace today. When we leave the Eucharist, we take Christ with us and we spread it. And if we leave and we become like the world, then we've done nothing, right? So that's, that's the thing. I want to read you a quote from Elder Porphyrius, his book, Wounded by Love. This guy is amazing. He says, um, and this is a guy, by the way, who was, who was trained in Mount Athos. So as some of you know, Mount Athos is this very strict, very rigid monastery in Greece. It's very harsh. It has very severe, strong prayer conditions. You, you fast all the time. You pray all the time. You attend service all the time. These are the hardcore guys, right? These are the, the army rangers of monastics, okay? And this man came out of this, right? So you're expecting hardcore, right? Listen to what he has to say. On my own, on my own I am not the church, but together with you, Important, it's important to unite ourselves with our fellow man, with the joys and sorrows of each and every one, to feel that they are our own. The joys and sorrows of other people are our own. To pray for everyone, to have care sorry, for their salvation, to... To forget about ourselves, to do everything for them just as Christ did for us. So in the church, I'm, uh, I prepared these slides for you all. 
In the church, we became one with each, uh, with each unfortunate suffering and sinful soul like Christ did with us. Uh, no one should wish to be saved alone without all the others being saved as well. And it's a mistake for someone just to pray for themselves so that he may be saved. Um, oh, sorry, I was paraphrasing, but that's St. Perfect. So this is the ultimate goal of this is the ultimate <coughs> goal of Christianity, right? It's to feel everyone's pain. The world tells us to accept people as they are, but we extend to them God's love and His call for transformation. Um, Mendez could not just leave that person; he loved him too much. Obviously, Mendez being Christ. It's not about right and wrong. It's about what's good for us. Yeah, this is actually a good point. Thanks, Mary. So this is, this is sort of the, the point that Abuna was making earlier, I think, that it isn't about making lists of things that are right and wrong and things I'm supposed to do, things I'm not supposed to do. I mean, St. Paul says, all things are legal for me, but not all things are helpful. I'll give you the exact quote. All things are lawful, but not all things are profitable. All things are lawful, but not all things edify. So sometimes our kids go up to us and say, is it okay if I do this? Is it okay if I do that? You know, can I skip this? Do I have to fast? Do I have to? And it's not about do I have to or I don't have to. You can do anything you want, right? Augustine has this beautiful saying where he says, love God and didn't do whatever you want, right? And, you know, I mean, you, you give that to a, a teenager. You say, okay, okay, I'll love God and then I'll do whatever I want, right? But that, maybe that's not where we're going. But when you truly love God, then just do whatever you want. And just do everything, everything in love. That's it, right? And this solves all the problems of, is this right, is this wrong? Should I treat this person this way? Should I treat, treat this person that way? Love God and then do whatever you want. And St. Paul says all things are lawful, right? So there isn't a rule that you got to do this, you got to do this, you know, live this way. But yes, when you, when you pick a certain path, you are picking to, to live away from God, right? And we all know, you know, when we're, when we're little kids, you know, sometimes when we're really little, we fear our parents, right? You know, they're going to get us in trouble. They're going to take away our devices. They're going to, you know, back in my day, they're going to spank us and do worse, right? Um, but as we get older, right, we evolve from that, right? So maybe as a small child, you fear, right? But then as you get older, right, as a teenager, you start to, uh, you start to bargain, right? You start thinking, well, you know, if I do this, then I'll get the car on Friday night. So maybe I will do my chores, so that you know, I get my allowance. And if I do this, then they'll buy me an iPad, right? And you start to think, how can I get stuff out of my parents, right? And that's, that's better than fearing, right? You're, you're moving in a direction. And then as you get much older, right, my age now, and I look at my parents, it's not about fearing my parents, and it's not about you know, wanting to get something out of my parents. It's about loving my parents, right? My, my dad, my mom asks me to do something. I don't do it because anything. Right? It's because I love them, right? And I want to give them, okay? And so our life with God evolves that way, right? It may start one way, but then it has to evolve into love. And when it evolves into love, then it's do whatever you want, right? Love God from the bottom of your heart and then do whatever you want, right? And you will do the right thing automatically, right? Without even thinking, is this, you know, is this right? Eh, none of that matters. Um, and and the, the one thing I'll... I'll say for that middle, oh, finally. Um, and then the part I love about this, about this movie is when they took the circus to the poorest parts of the, of the country, right? You saw those people, like kids throwing a rock in a tin can, right? It's sad to see. And then they bring this joy and this happiness to them. And this is what we're called to do. The world is living in that, that kind of desolate state. You talk to some people, and you see them, there's just nothing. There's nothing in their lives. There's no hope. There's no even glisten in their eyes for life, right? They're just gone, right? And that, that circus comes, and it inspires, and it brings awe. And then you saw the one girl. She was watching the juggler, and what did she start doing? She started pretending to juggle. Right? It's a little baby, right? And this is how we have to be. We have to bring Christ's transformation of us to the world. That's the next step. Right? For the sheer purpose of transforming them out of love for them. Right? And you saw even the, the master 
his eyes would tear up as he watched, you know, the, the limbless man do something great, right? Because that was his ultimate goal, right? Was to raise him and make him great as well. So, um, and the, this line, I love this. You know, when the guy said, you know, it's unfair that I'm, you know, limb, you know, I'm limbless. And he says, you have an advantage. The greater the struggle, the more glorious the triumph. And sometimes God lets us struggle. And then I'll, st- I'll end there, but you remember when the limbless man fell over <laughs> and the top hat man, he just, Menendez just walks right by him. I love that scene, right? Because we do this all the time. We look at God and say, can't you see what I'm in right now? Can't you see the problems I have? Why aren't you fixing them? And God looks at them and he says, I'm just going to walk right past you, right? You are there for a reason and you are down and you will learn something from this, right? And he just looked at him and said, what's wrong with you? And this is a prayer we've said to God. What's wrong with you? Don't you see what my family, my kids, my spouse, my friend, my boss, my whatever, don't you see what's happening? And God walks by and says, this will make you glorious, right? This fall is going to make you greater, and you're going to learn who you are more because of this fall than without the fall, right? And then even a step further, he starts to drown, and right when he thinks he's going to drown is when he learns to swim. And he realizes, I can swim, right? And that's when Menendez realizes his transformation is complete, right? He's, he's there, right? He's, he's learned something about himself, and he's gone from the, the sickness of the world to the glory of this butterfly circus. That's all I have. Does anybody have any questions, comments, criticisms, complaints? Mary, question? No. no. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's inspirational. And, and instead of bringing out the worst in people, which he used to do, right? Because if you notice, another little boy threw a tomato at him earlier. Now he brings out the best in people, right? And this is, again, the, 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 the gospel of faith and the gospel of hope, right, that, that we preach, not the gospel of condemnation and anger and hatred. And, you know, and again, the, you know, attacks like the ones that happened in Paris sort of bring out sometimes these, these, these feelings and these emotions that may not be very Christian, right? They're angry. They're, let's get these guys. Let's bomb them. Let's invade Syria. Let's, I mean, you know, let's shoot them all. I mean, these aren't, this isn't. This isn't the butterfly circus, right? That's, you know, it's like a mafia movie, right? But it's not, it's not transformation, right? And this is what we are called to do, right? And it's very important to remember that the, the church teaches us that we have to love others, but they're not necessarily going to love us back, right? And you have to always remember that. And that's something to teach our kids because they're going to be mocked and they're going to be laughed at and people are going to be mean to them, right? And this is what, this is the way the world is, right? And in fact, Christ in the ultimate example, you know, not only here's a perfect man who's not only not loved, he was crucified by some people, All right? So our call is to love everybody, but don't expect everyone to love you back, right? In fact, Christ said something about John the Baptist, right? He said, what did you expect to see a reed blowing in the wind, right? Do you expect to see some, you know, flimsy guy, right? Uh, you know, if, in fact, some fathers say, if everyone does like you, it's probably a problem, right? There's probably something wrong if everybody likes you, right? Someone's not going to like you, and that's okay, right? Your job, your principle is to be that light, to be that shining, to be that transformation, and let people do whatever they want to do with their lives. Okay, kids are tearing it up outside, so we'll, here they come. So something else to point on the podcast is people get kind of hung up on these things where they say, you know, look at uh, marriage between two of the same group, okay? And look at abortion, look at 
all of these problems we have in the world, that, you know, and look what these people are doing. They're destroying the family. These people are out to get us. These people are out to change. And again, it isn't about making a right or wrong. Which side are you on? Are you pro-abortion or anti-abortion? Are you this? It's about what's good for you, right? And what's fulfilling for you, right? So yeah, you can, you can be in the side sideshow of the circus and you can be a freak and you can choose that life if you want and that limbless man did choose that life for the longest time and what God is trying to bring us out of is don't choose that life right choose something better choose something transformative okay sorry I went a little long and uh, all right glory be to God forever amen let's stand up and pray real quick make us worthy to say with all thanksgiving our father 